All right, let's prove the Zassenhaus butterfly lemma. So it's a lemma, and this is due to Zassenhaus. Haas, whatever. I don't know. All right, so let H and K be subgroups of a group G. Um, and then we also have H prime and K prime. H prime is going to be normal. Oh, that is not a good normality triangle thing. So H prime is going to be normal in H. And K prime is going to be normal in K. Then H prime times H intersect K prime is normal in H prime times H intersect K. Um, K prime times K intersect H prime is normal in K prime, K intersect H, and H prime times H intersect Yeah, sure, let, let's, let's do this. This will bleed over to the next line, but that's fine. H prime, H intersect K prime is isomorphic to K prime, K intersect H mod K prime, K intersect H prime. Okay, so that should be obvious how you'd prove that. No, I'm completely joking. This is really strange that there's like just so many things going on here in the statement. And it's even more amazing that this is actually a really useful proof um, in proving the Schreier refinement theorem, which is really important in group theory. Um, but why is this called the butterfly lemma? It's because if you look at this, this is um, what this situation looks like. Each of these lines means subgroups. So H prime times H intersect K is a subgroup of H. H prime intersect K is a subgroup of H prime and so on. Um, each line means it's a subgroup. And so we have this picture. So first of all, what is the lemma saying? It's saying this thing is normal in this. Okay, so that means what we're saying is this thing is normal in this. And likewise, this thing is normal in this. Um, and then further, that mod that is that mod that. So basically, this mod this is isomorphic to this mod this. So that's what's going on here. What, what, what we're really focusing on is these two and these two. But the reason it's called the butterfly lemma is that if you go ahead and you fill in all this other stuff here, then this sort of looks like an upside down butterfly. And I actually have that, I have one of my math shirts has the Zossen House, this picture thingy on it on the back but I didn't wear it because I'm doing the laundry so anyways yeah the one day that I'm actually proving the Zossen House Lemma I can't anyways so let's prove this and by the way I mentioned in the last video that this was like the missing step of the proof of the Schreier refinement theorem you have to go through and figure out what all of those things in the Schreier refinement theorem needed to be. It turns out what you need is was if you let H be H I, H prime be H I plus one, K be K J, and K prime be K J plus one. If you take those and you plug those in to what we did in the last video, it gives you exactly what we were looking for. Um, I will leave that to you though to figure that out. So anyways, Let's prove this. Okay, so first thing we want to do is this is normal in here and this is normal in here. 
So let's see here. H prime intersect K is normal in H intersect K because H prime is normal in H and likewise we have um, what's the other thing that we have uh, the, 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 the same statement on the other side k prime intersect h is normal in k intersect h that's because okay so if you have h prime inter, uh, is normal in h then if you take anything in h prime intersect k and you conjugate it by something in h intersect k then in particular that the, this thing in the intersection is going to be in H. And so what it's going to give you is you're going to end we're, by, by normality, you're going to end up with something in H prime. Um, but because you're also conjugating by something in K, you're going to end up with something in K. And so conjugation is going to give you something in H prime intersect K prime. And so that proves normality. That was really fast proof of that statement, but you can go ahead and prove that in more detail if you want to. That if you, it, this works for any H prime normal in H in any subgroup K, um, you can do this. But anyway, so that's that. So H prime intersect K times K prime intersect H is normal in H intersect K. And again, I'll leave that to you, but the idea is, okay, so because of the uh, normality, um, let's see here. We know that if you, if you take a subgroup and you multiply it by a normal subgroup, you're going to get a subgroup. That's uh, what, second or first isomorphism theorem? One of the isomorphism theorems tells you that. I think it's the second one. Yeah, it's the second one. Um, so this product is going to be a subgroup and well both of these are separately nor this is normal in H intersect K and this is normal in H intersect K so if you take something in here and conjugate by an element of G you take then what you have is you have G times something in here times something in here times G inverse and then you do the typical trick oh that's G times something in here times G inverse times G times something in here times G inverse and so then that's going to be something that's in here and here. And so, yeah, you just go from there. So you can prove that this is normal in here that way.